Well, hey everybody, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Starting out this video uh, over on the workbench, got something a little different uh, going on here, and you might be asking, what's this guy, uh, Seaboard Airline guy got a cotton belt car on his bench for? Well, I wanna do some weathering, and I wanna do it to this particular car, because a friend of mine, Jason, some of y'all know as the train freak, uh, and he's got a channel, which I'll, I'll put a card up here. Uh, he and I are going to exchange. He's got the same car on his layout, and we are going to exchange it uh, between industries uh, on his layout and on mine. So he's got an industry, if I just show my way bill here, uh, called Shack of Sit. That's a furniture company in uh, Y Junction, Arkansas, on Jason's layout. And he's going to be shipping uh, furniture up to a warehouse I've got uh, in South Yard here on the Seaboard Airline in Richmond. So that'll be kind of fun. <clears throat> We've also got a Seaboard Airline uh, box car in common, but uh, I'm gonna start with this one. And since it's kind of a special car, I wanna do a little bit of a special job weathering it. And uh, I challenge Jason to, uh, to weather his as well. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be doing here uh, in this video. And uh, in a couple more op session videos uh, after the last one I did, uh, I'll actually bring this onto the layout. Uh, he'll be shipping it from his in a video on his channel, and then I'll be showing uh, showing the layout arrive onto mine, uh, being switched in the yard, and, and, and where it ultimately ends up uh, in the industries behind, uh, behind the yard. So that's going to be kind of something fun to do. Um, so let's weather this guy up. All right, so as is the case with anything y'all see on this channel, this is not a how to do this exactly correctly or whatever. This is just what I'm doing. Um, and, I've you know, I've watched a bunch of other people um, <clears throat> do do all the various parts and pieces of model railroading in different ways and these are just the methods that I've used and and, and weathering I've, I've maybe only we weathered a dozen cars or so so I am not uh, any kind of an authority on this so take whatever I say with a grain of salt but I usually start by disassembling the car so I'll take the the base out of it I take the wheels off um, they're under here I'll eventually take the the wheels out of the trucks when I'm ready to, to paint those. But for the body itself, I'll just give it a nice uh, warm bath and some soapy water, some gentle scrubbing with the toothbrush. I'll pat the big drops off because I don't want water droplets and then let, let it, the rest of it just air dry. And that's sort of step one. All right, now that our model is washed and I just use toilet paper rolls to, as, as handles, very easy. Next step is to uh, put a satin coat on it ahead of a dot fade. And I've been making my own uh, gloss, satin, and matte finishes. Uh, I, I will use Tester's Dull Coat in a rattle can once in a while just to uh, keep things simple. But if I'm weathering a car, I probably got the airbrush out anyway. So um, I actually make my own and all credit to John Crowder at JC's Rip Track. Uh, if y'all haven't, you should check his channel out. He's got some really uh, good tutorials on how to weather and then some practical ones too, where he's, he's doing some, you know, locomotives, freight cars, whatever, uh, using the same techniques. But uh, there's a, a base weathering series of videos he's done. And, and most of what I've learned, I've, I've learned uh, watching those. So anyway, um, this is a satin I've made. Um, it is uh, in the 10 you see in the corner, uh, top right of that label. Um, that means it is 10 parts uh, pledge floor cleaner to one part Tamiya flat base. That's the X21. So you just mix those together, uh, shake it up a little bit, a few drops of thinner um, in there and, and, and you're good to go. So that's what I use for the satin. And that is our next step. All right, so with my trusty cupcake airbrush, no kidding, that's what that's for, uh, I've got the satin coat. You can kind of see that satin finish. Um, sprayed it all on the roof, both sides, both ends. And so now we are ready to do our dot fade. Put this down. And for the dot fade, uh, over that satin finish, I've got some oils out here. So we've got titanium white, uh, raw sienna, uh, burnt umber uh, next to that, then burnt sienna and Payne's gray. And um, 
these three are sort of recommended you always use. And then the fourth and fifth, you want to use a color that's sort of like the car. And then it gets into color, art, art color wheel theory, I don't understand. But um, the idea of making like a filter, uh, you're actually using a similar color as the car. So sort of that box car red. And then something on the opposite side of the color wheel, which uh, I'm using paints gray. But sort of a blue gray color is sort of opposite uh, this reddish brown uh, and it has to do with uh, creating filters and how the light passes through or reflects and I don't understand it but I, uh, I just know it works because I've done it a couple times so those are the five colors and uh, we'll do that dot fade. how the car looks it's still very wet after the dot fade not sure how good my lighting is under here and uh, what I'll do is let it kind of sit for maybe the next 30 minutes or so and come back and if I see like right there I'm already starting to see right dead center of frame a couple of dots I didn't get all the way spread out Maybe a little bit there on the roof, um, but I'll let it sit. Those things will pop out a little bit more. This is oil paint and it's sitting on a uh, satin finish. So it's the, the paint itself isn't gonna dry anytime soon. It's the thinners that will, and that's okay. We'll let the thinners evaporate, see if we can spot any dots that I missed and uh, come back with additional thinner and we can still work this for, you know, gosh, at least the next day. So plenty of time. All right, so the spirits uh, all dried. And I did uh, come back with a dry brush and kind of work a couple of other, other dots that sort of showed up and kind of blended them in. But that kind of gives you a feel for what the fade does. I mean, it just makes it look faded. And because I used oils and lots of different colors, it's kind of an uneven fade, which is, uh, you know, sometimes preferable to uh, to just airbrush in a, a single color onto here. So gives it a little bit of a, a different kind of a cool look. Uh, so from here, um, I think I'm gonna do a pin wash next. Um, and I'll do that with oils as well. Uh, but I wanna seal this in. Uh, I don't wanna accidentally move or you know remove any of the pigments I've got on here from the fade. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a gloss coat on, let that set, and then I'll do a pin wash that I'll show uh, with oil paint as well. So again, for the gloss, I'll be using just my homemade stuff. Um, it is uh, the same uh, floor gloss from Pledge as the satin recipe, but instead of uh, a 10 to one cleaner or floor polish to flat base, this doesn't have any flat base in it at all, but I do cut it with some X20A thinner. So it's just mostly the the floor gloss with a little X20A mixed in to help it flow through the airbrush better. And I figured I'd just show you guys just in case anybody's wondering what I'm using. Um, this is a cupcake airbrush, um, a little compressor. You control the pressure here. There's no tank. Um, I'm sure it's a very cheap airbrush, but it, it does the job, especially for these clear coats and simple stuff. Um, it is dual action. so press for gas and uh, pull the trigger to let the uh, the paint or, or uh, clear coat or what have you uh, flow. Uh, and that's all there is to it. So uh, another thing I do, and uh, it's probably, I don't know if it's necessary or not, but every time I use the airbrush, I do uh, completely disassemble it and, and clean it. I figure it's, it can't hurt. And uh, last thing you wanna do is get some kind of material stuck around the uh, the needle in there and inhibit the flow. So we just put a little of my 
homemade gloss coat there. Put that to the side so I don't spill it. And fire it up. Flows right. about right. Get a nice little gloss coat on here and let that cure for a bit uh, before I, I'll probably let that cure overnight before I um, do the next step, the, the pin wash. Um, so just had a little bit of extra gloss left over there. And then one thing I do to clean it is I just do a little bit of this, just a little isopropyl alcohol just to kind of blow through it and then I'll disassemble it as well. And I need it. I'll just disassemble it right now. So I just helps if you turn it the right way. Gas line away. And I just take every single part out. And that's just Windex. And I'll scrub it with a gently scrub it with a tooth toothbrush and the Windex, and then rinse it all off with warm water and let it air dry. But I do this every time. And that's all of it. So I'll take that to the sink, give her a scrub, and she'll be ready for uh, the next time uh, I need to use it. All right, well with our gloss coat now cured since yesterday, we're ready to do the pin wash. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the specifics on, on how those uh, work, but uh, the idea is um, you're highlighting rivets and panel lines and hinges and doors and grab irons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, rather than spread a wash over the whole surface of the model, you're just highlighting those details. All right, I'm using... This color right here, uh, Abtolung 502. Uh, this is Starship Filth. Um, pretty dilute wash with uh, mineral spirits. I'm going to get a little bit of thinner just on the on the surface of the model to help that wash run a little better. This is just straight thinner. And remember, I've done a gloss coat, so I'm not manipulating to seal in, you know, the, the oil I already did. So this isn't manipulating any of that. That should be sealed in now. Make sure you guys can see that. Yep. You just let it run. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to come back and feather it. But any little rivets and detail will make them stand out. And these boxcars are loaded with rivets.
don't know if you can see that, it's just running right down the edges of things. Just bring out all that detail. So after I did a wash, a pin wash, on the whole car, I waited about 30 minutes, maybe closer to an hour, and came in with a wide flat brush that was dry and just feathered the edges. And what it leaves you with is it just sort of highlights the, the details. It makes the shadows darker and you know you can see the rivets a little bit better than you could before. And same on this side. And uh, so that's that's about it. What I'm going to do now is um, just a little bit of like a grimy dust around the bottom and maybe a little bit on the ends of the car. Get the trucks and wheels um, and uh, probably call this a day. So more to come. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of a dull coat. Again, my, my homemade mixture. Um, just kind of deaden this down a bit. Uh, before I do the, the dust step, and then that's probably all I'm going to do to this car. For the wheels, I've got this little jig. Um, you just pop them in and it protects the surface of the wheels that's on the rails. And you can just spray the side of them very easily. And then for the trucks, I just stick them on a bamboo skewer like a lot of people do and just rotate it around and, and hit that with the dust color as well. So for the dust coat, and again, uh, all credit to uh, John Crowdis on JC's Rip Track. Um, this is his mixture. It's 50% uh, XF52 Flat Earth and 50% XF57 Buff. And I just mix it up with some thinner and keep it on hand for just this very occasion. Uh, I use it to kind of dust up the bottom of the car, the trucks, and the wheels. Oops. And as I go to reassemble the car, I did run the truck tuner from Micromark uh, through each of the trucks. Um, just kind of scrape out in case any paint got in there. Um, it's probably not a big deal. But uh, yeah, did that and uh, just got my, uh, got my trucks off the skewer, uh, cleaned them out. I'll pop the wheels back in and reassemble the car, take it over to the layout and, uh, and show it to you guys. All right, after those three pretty simple, straightforward steps, that's what, uh, that's what the car looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. That's not gonna win contests, but it looks good on the layout, a lot better than the shiny plastic, in my opinion. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, we'll get this guy in operations here uh, soon. Uh, show you that, uh, as I talked about at the beginning of the video. 
Um, yeah, Jason's got to ship me a load of furniture. Anyway, thanks for, uh, for watching, guys. I hope everyone is well and safe.